Hey guys, welcome to TFL Truck. Today we are back at the Happy Ant Rack with David and the brand new Ford F-150. What? Happy Yak, ra Happy Ranch Yak. Oh, <laughs> Did I, is that what I said? <laughs> yeah. Hey guys, welcome to TFL Truck. We are back today at the Happy Yak Ranch with David and the brand new F-150. And we've got some work to do and some impressions to give. So David, what do you think of the new truck? Sweet, it's beautiful. It's cool. Now in this video, we're gonna try grinding with the new Pro Power onboard inverter. We're gonna try welding. And of course, we're gonna try the massaging seat. Ooh, yeah, after we get our work done. After we get it work done, yeah. That's a necessity. All right, so Case, I'm gonna take the camera and let's do a little walk around with David, see what he thinks. One of the most important things that we need to figure out here is what of all of these features are useful and what aren't. Because what might seem useful to us might not be so important to someone who actually uses their truck for construction work and, you know, on the job site. Well, you know, here at the Happy Yak Ranch, we, we do have a few rules. And have you ever heard of the KISS rule? Yeah, keep K it simple. Keep it simple, stupid. stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so I try to keep everything as simple as possible because things break, right? This truck may have a few too many toys for my liking, but I must say there's some pretty cool toys on this truck. Well, let's check some of them out. So first things first, when we come around the side, it's got a running board that comes out automatically. And actually you notice something towards the back of it. Yeah, I can see uh, this coming in really handy because you just bump that. And of course me being, you know, carpenter slash farmer, I need to get in the bed a lot. And so this right here, being able to do this, and then put my foot right here and reach for something. I see that as being a real nice feature. Especially because I know you've said in the past, a lot of modern truck beds, the rails come up really high, so it they makes do. them hard to reach into. Yeah, because even right now, I can't, without getting on my tippy toes, I can't reach the bed floor. So I like this. David, what about the step? Is that a oh, world? The step? oh yeah, I do like Ford step. I think it was a, a great invention by Ford. So do you think a step would be something that you would use often? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, the older I get, <laughs> I used to be able to climb in real easy. Not so much anymore. So yeah, this is a handy feature. Okay. And also, you know, I'm always getting tools out of the back of my truck. Right. And so a lot of times you got both arms with something a toolbox or a bucket or whatever. And it's nice to be able to carry your bucket, step there, and come down without, you know, having to drop them on the tailgate, right? jump down. So I do like this feature a lot. This F-150 is something called the Power Boost, which means it's a hybrid F-150. It combines both gasoline and electricity. And because this is a hybrid, we have the option for the 7.2 kilowatt onboard power in the bed. So I'm gonna start up the F-150. It's probably gonna cycle the gasoline engine on and off depending on the load. And then we're gonna see, can we power a grinder and a welder? The F-150's first task is to help us do a little bit of work to our 2002 Toyota Tacoma, nicknamed Baby Yoda. This is a truck that is part of a series over on TFL Classics, where we're going to build this into an overlander that will soon be auctioned for a local charity. So right now, David's got to bust out his angle grinder because our little hitch uh, right here is locked in and the key is gone. It's gone. All right, we're just gonna whack it off. Now the F-150 did a good job there powering the angle grinder, but its work isn't done yet because we've got to do a little modification to our older F-150 here, six shooter. Well, you know, a lot of people in the comments have kind of talked about the fact that we were just going to scrap six shooter, right. but I decided not to scrap six shooter just to keep it as a farm truck. And I've been getting a lot of use out of it. I've yeah. been hauling hay and checking on the yaks up on the mountain, and I need to do a little work on it today. I think we, what we ought to do is at least have a re recovery hook or something attached to the front because there's no way to hook up to it to pull it out of the ditch when I get stuck. Yeah, and getting stuck in this truck is very likely because not only is it two-wheel drive, but it's open differential, so it's it, one-wheel it drive, really. And I got underneath and trying to look and see what I could get to uh, hook to. Somebody had already hooked a recovery strap to one of the frame members and just yanked the holy crap out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right for this truck. We're going to slide this up behind the bumper, cut a hole in the bumper, and then weld this in place. And then that way we have a way to attach our recovery hook to, 
in case we get stuck again, which I know we will. But I think maybe today we'll put this together and then take our new project truck, the Toyota, and see if it can tug us up the mountain or rip the bumper off either way. <laughs> I don't think the Toyota has enough torque to rip the bumper off. Well, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully I got a whole cut. All right. Like a glove. David, what do we got here? So this is my little uh, Lincoln electric welder, and it can use gas or not use gas, basically, you know, for making clean wells. But I use it a lot without gas, uh, and use a flux core wire, which basically it just makes it so that a splatter isn't quite as bad. We'll see what happens when she starts pulling juice. I just blew something. Look at this. So it went straight into the red and it said you exceeded the maximum capability. Darn. So we pulled 3.6 kilowatts out of uh, our, our 110 volt and then it blew it. We'll, we'll try resetting it and we'll give it one more whirl. All right, let's do this. I'm, put it, I'm on my highest level. Okay. So I'm gonna tone it down a little bit. I probably don't need it that hot anyway because the bumper's a little thinner. Okay. So I'm gonna go down a notch and see if that helps. All right, let's see if our receiver fits. Hopefully my measurements were right. All right. Ah, look at that, so now we have a way well, we think we have a way where we can tow the F-150 uh, using, you know, more solid point. Although, I'm sure we're going to get a lot of comments about using the bumper as a, <laughs> as a recovery point. This is not recommended, but no, we did prove that the F-150 could power the welder. Yeah. But not on its highest setting, right? What setting are you at? Well, I put it, uh, I have A, B, C, and D, which I typically weld at on C mode. Uh, that's just the amount of heat. Uh, D, if I'm, if I'm going quarter to quarter, I'll use D. But being that the bumper was probably one eighth, it was fine being on the C mode. So we got a good weld. Yeah, we got a good hot weld. Now, are there such thing as 240 volt welders? Oh yeah, so most it, of them are. So you could potentially run a 240 volt on this as well because you have 240 at 30 amps. It might be more efficient. It might be more efficient, yeah. yeah. More than likely it will be. Whereas I think on 120, you can only pull 15 amps. But this, you know, the nice thing is if you just bought yourself a cheap welder, I mean, you know, this is like $500 range welder. Okay. And take it with you on the trail. If uh, something breaks, you can fix your vehicle. Nice. That's good to know, isn't it? It's really good to know. So we have 3,600 watts out of one set of outlets and 3,600 watts out of the other set. So in theory, you could run two of these welders. I was really surprised that the motor only kicked on for a short time right in the middle of the weld. Right, yeah, the engine remained off for almost the whole time, uh, which meant we were just using the electricity from the, uh, the 1.5 kilowatt hour onboard battery. Right, yeah. that's impressive. That was cool. All right, David, so job well done. Oh, thank you. It's time to relax a little bit, and we're going to try the massaging function on this limited F-150. Oh, sweet. After a whole day of welding, I'm going to need a good back <laughs> massage. Here, we'll do full recovery. Yeah, I need full recovery. Kind of working? Yeah, the little lumbar action going on there. Yeah. Oh, now my butt cheeks. That's the butt one? Yep. Yeah, that's my butt cheeks there. I can see if you were, you know, on a long road trip and you're just stuck in this position for hours at a time, that would be a nice feature. That'd be a good one too. Yeah, I don't think after a hard day's work, that's really not doing much for you. <laughs> now, what about this feature? Go ahead and scoot the, foe, the seat forward a little bit and put it all the way back. Let's try the nap mode. It is midday. It's time for this old man to take a nap. How's that feature? Is that useful? Well, I can't really say that you could sleep in this position. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could put the seat forward and then pull the headrest out. Oh, and that's could... funny. The lumbar just relaxed right there. Oh, now it's, oh, it's massaging still. <laughs> well, you can't sleep with massage going on. Maybe at an angle. <laughs> no, that's a no-go. <laughs> no. Good idea. 
just not all that practical. It's a cool idea. I just don't think it, you're going to be in a comfortable enough position to sleep. No. David, what did you think of the F-150 Limited? Could this survive a day out at the ranch? Well, it's definitely a beautiful truck. And it has some features that I would really like in a truck. That power outlet in the back, obviously we show it's strong enough and powerful enough that can weld and run our grinder and pretty much do any chore that has to be done around the farm. I just think it would be difficult for me to want to take this truck on the farm and put a little ding or a scratch on it. It would just eat me up inside. So I'm going to say it's beautiful and I'll give it to my wife. So that is the limited F-150 with an MSRP of almost 80 grand, but be sure to stay tuned because hopefully we're going to get a much more affordable version of this truck out here. We'd love that Ford if you're listening so that we can really put, put it through its paces and we'll try hauling and, and, and towing stuff out here on the Happy Yak Ranch. Yeah, that'll be good. Well, as always, this is Tommy, Case, and David. David. Check out tfltruck.com for the latest and greatest in new F-150 reviews.